Hi there all, I just thought I'd do another little video for you. I hope you've all been enjoying um, the start of the new sewing bee and seeing the wrap skirt on there, I thought it would be a fab idea if I did a little sew along uh, for one of those as well. So what I've done is I've created a nice easy little make it yourself swishy wrap skirt. Um, don't worry if you haven't got a pattern because this tutorial actually includes how to make your own pattern for this little wrap skirt as well. The sun's out and shining today, so it's the perfect day to get making something that little bit summery. So this little wrap skirt is what we're gonna be making today. Enjoy the tutorial, and uh, I hope you have lots of fun making it. The first one is your waist and what you want to do to take a waist measurement is to keep your body posture nice and straight, so shoulders back, head up, wrap that tape measure round your waist at the very thinnest part of your waist. Don't be breathing in, you'll just cheat yourself out of a bit of fabric you might need later on. Um, so be nice and relaxed, normal posture and then with your head still up, wrap that tape measure around, get it nicely crossed over and then look down to the measurement you have. At this point, if you have a pin handy, what you can also do is just through your clothes, not through yourself, um, pop a little pin at the height on your clothing that you've taken that measurement. You'll see what that's for in just a little bit, but it's a good idea to do it as you go along, it makes things easier. Once we have this measurement for our waist, we're going to jot that down very quickly. And then I'll move on to taking a measurement for the hips, leaving this little pin in place here. Now the hips, I'll stand back a little so you can see me. The hips is the very widest part of the hips. Again, you don't want to cheat yourself out of a little bit of fabric you might need later on. So take the very widest, drop the tape measure down until you can feel it's, it's the very widest point and take a measurement around those hips um, and jot that down as well. Before you take the tape measure away, pop a little pin at the level just through the front there, that you've taken your hip measurement as well. So you now have two little markers that will help you. I'm just going to jot that hip measurement down to. So you now got two little markers, a pin here, and you might be able to see it, a pin just here, and I want to take the distance between those two as well. And we're going to jot that down as well so that we can make a little note on our pattern. And the final measurement you're going to want is just how long you want your skirt to be. Now I can lose the pin that was at the hip level for now, and the pin that was at my waist level, I'm going to measure down from that pin again, and I'm just gonna let the tape measure drop down. And a little trick with this one, if you want to hold the tape measure just along the front there, you can let the top then drop away and it doesn't matter if you then bend down to look where your tape measure may come to your knee or down to your ankle or somewhere in between. This skirt can be made whatever length you like. If you're measuring right from the waist and then you bend down to have a look what height your tape measure is um, sitting at, you're going to immediately lose a few centimetres as, as soon as you bend forward. But if you hold that set tape measure, on the front of your thigh, so you've got that first measurement set, you can then let go of the top and bend down quite happily to see just how far down um, you would like that skirt to sit, where it's going to sit near your knee. Okay, so those are the four measurements that we're going to want to take from our body to create our pattern. Um, so it'll be on to the next step. Now we've got those all written down. So to create your pattern, there's a couple of things that you're going to need. We want a nice big bit of paper. I've got some dot and cross paper here, but anything you can lay your hands on, wrapping paper, brown paper, tissue paper, greaseproof paper, 
as long as it's a nice wide sheet of paper, you can even stick a few bits of A4 paper together if you're really um, struggling to find a large sheet of paper, because that's what you're going to need. We're also going to want a couple of little bits, including your measurements that you jotted down just a moment ago. We want a pair of paper scissors. Uh, we want a pen to draw with. Our tape measure will come in handy and a ruler will also come in handy. So those bits and bobs, just get them together before you move on to creating your pattern. The next little bit of this video is a little section of instructional slides to show you exactly what you're doing with your measurements and how you're creating your pattern. So we'll move on to that in just a second. Before you move on to that one, and you might want to pause the video to do this um, just as you go along, take the measurements that you took earlier and what you actually want to do is your waist measurement you're going to want to divide that by four and your hip measurement you are also going to want to divide that by four so grab the calculator quick and then we'll move on to the little instructional set of slides to create your pattern see you on the other side of that You're going to create your skirt pattern using the measurements we've taken in the previous section. You want to first mark the length of your skirt onto your piece of paper and draw a solid line that length. From the top of that line, measure out at a right angle one quarter of your waist plus one centimetre and mark that as another line. You then want to measure down from the top the distance that was between your waist and your hip and make a little mark along that length line that you can then measure out from to mark a quarter of your hip plus two centimetres and draw that as a solid line as well. What you then want to do is down for the bottom of your skirt is to measure out a quarter of your hip plus between four and eight centimetres, depending on how much swing you want your skirt to have. For my pattern, I marked six, but you can do anything between four, eight, a little more if you wish. Once you've decided that, mark that as a solid line as well. We're then going to join the tips of each line, which will be a kind of diagonal line, maybe different for different people, Mark those as a solid line, and I've just taken away the other markings so that it's more clear to see the next step. We're going to measure upwards two centimetres from the end of your waistline and the end of your hemline, and we're then going to remark those top lines to two centimetres up, drawing them in as solid. What we then want to do is from the waistline measure out two centimetres. Draw a line that runs through that two centimetres up to meet the waistline. We then want to mark in the middle of the line we drew for our hips where our dart is going to be positioned. So make a mark at the centre of that line and then draw a line straight upwards towards the waistline. Up at the waistline, measure one centimetre to either side and then draw those as solid lines as well and that will create the dart you're going to make. What you then want to do is add a slight curve to those straight lines so we're softening all the lines of the pattern. You want a slight curve at the waistline, a slight curve at the hemline and if needed a slight curve where the waist and hip lines meet. Draw these in and then you can move on to adding your seam allowances. Seam allowance should be 1.5 centimetre down the side hem, 1.5 centimetre at the waistline and 3 centimetres at the hem. Finally, mark your pattern where that centre line, the line that you marked initially for the length of your skirt, just make a note that that's to be cut on a fold so your pattern pieces will all end up the correct size. So I have worked through those steps and created my finished pattern. What I've done for today's video is I've highlighted 
the outline of the finished pattern in red so you can see the construction lines sitting underneath it all and then you can see in red we've got the lines that show you what the final um, size of the pattern should be with the seam allowances added in and everything. What we're now going to do is cut that pattern out and get it laid out and pinned onto the fabric um, so that we can begin to bring our pattern pieces together. We're going to cut one piece on the fold for the back of the skirt and then we're going to cut two of the pieces for the front of the skirt. So we've got one that overlaps the other one um, to wrap around. So I've now got my pattern piece all nicely cut out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the fabric that I'm going to use, which is a gorgeous print from Sea Salt. What we're going to want to do is line up the edge of our pattern piece with the fold of the fabric. We'll pop a few pins into place just to hold it along that fold. We'll then cut round that first pattern piece. So remember this is for the back of the skirt only at the moment. We'll cut all the way round making sure we follow those lines as best we can. And then along the top of the pattern piece, past where we have our darts. So that's now cut. To mark the darts, place a pin through the end of the dart. Turn your pattern round if you need to and having removed the other pins, just very gently fold back one layer of fabric so you can see where the dart end is marked and that pin is passing through both layers of fabric. Take a pen or chalk or whatever you want to use to mark the end of your dart and just pop a little mark at either end. To mark the top of the dart, fold back just one layer of fabric again and just do a little line at the top of either side of that dart so you've got two marks to bring together. Moving on to the front pieces, what we're then going to want to do is actually fold away that dart before we cut out our front pieces. And the easiest way to fold that dart away is to fold the pattern piece along that centre line of the dart and then fold it back along the line where the two sides of the dart should meet. That will give you just a slightly altered pattern piece. It's not a huge change. It just means there's a slight difference to the pattern piece. Now you will have a little bump in the middle of the pattern piece. That's not the end of the world. That's to do um, with the shaping. So just pin that pattern piece back on with the dart folded away. And again, on folded fabric, pin and cut two of those. You're going to want two front pieces so that they can wrap round and overlap at the front. A single piece for the back and then two pieces to overlap at the front. I've pinned and cut out my pattern pieces. So here are my two front pieces with the pattern still pinned on, the dart still tucked away. And I'll just take those off now. I have my back piece ready and cut as well. So I've got those three pieces ready to create my skirt. One final thing I need to do is to make sure from my fabric, I've got a waistband as well for my skirt. Now the waistband is gonna to need to be one and a half times your waist measurement plus four centimeters for seam allowance as well. So take the waist measurement you had earlier, times it by one and a half and then add on four centimeters to create your waistband. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get those darts into the back panel. Now having marked up just a minute ago where those darts should sit, I'm going to find the end of the dart and just pinch that together and then I shall grab a pin and I'm going to pin a crossways at the end of the dart and then I'm going to find the two marks for the top of the dart and I'm going to bring them together. I'll just give it a little press down onto the table and I'm going to pin downwards 
at the very top of the darts. I've got my machine all threaded up, ready with a nice neutral coloured thread. I've gone with the background of this pattern. I have got my machine set on a normal straight stitch, 2.5 long, and I'm simply going to sew from the very tip of the dart all the way to the edge of the fabric up at the waistband. Starting off where that first pin is to mark the point of the dart, I'll get rid of that pin. I'm just going to start off very gently. Now I do do a tiny little reverse at the start of my darts, but it's only very, very small. Um, if you don't feel confident doing that, just sew into the end of the dart and then you can very gently knot the ends of the thread together instead of doing a little reverse there. So that's one dart sewn and we'll do exactly the same with the second dart. We are then going to give them to little press with the, our little iron just to bring them down nice and flat. Ideally you press darts in towards the centre of the body so if they're back darts they go in towards the spine, if they're front darts they go in towards the belly button. Once those have had a little press what we're then going to do is we're going to bring our front skirt panel and we're going to put them right sides together. We'll pop a few pins in to make sure it just stays in a nice straight line as we sew it. So first we're going to sew it just with a lovely straight line of stitching. A little reverse to start and finish and then all the way down to the other end remembering our 1.5 seam allowances as we go. We're going to do what's called an overcasting stitch. Now overcasting is really just a tidy up stitch. It's to make sure that your lovely skirt, when it goes through the wash or when it's being worn, it's not going to fray at all. Now an overcasting sit stitch sounds awfully posh but it's just a zigzag. I'm going to set it to a zigzag stitch. I'm going to line my fabric up right in the centre of the presser foot and then I'm going to stitch all the way along those two raw edges, bringing them together and after that we'll have a lovely press and we'll do exactly the same thing again with the seam on the other side. We've brought both of those seams together so now we, what we want to do is just press the seam nice and flat all the way along. We've overcast the two raw edges together so we can press it just over to one side. If you're using a particularly thick fabric for this, if you've decided to make a winter version in a wool or something like that, you could always overcast your two seam allowances separately and press them apart instead. But for today's little summer skirt, pressing the two over together is absolutely fine and will be just as light as the fabric is. So we've got a little skirt here that can have a little wrap round. Lovely. <laughs> the edge that is going to form the edge of the wrap, that needs to be folded over once by about three quarters of a centimetre, half or three quarters of a centimetre, and then once again, by the same. We'll fold that over. So it's effectively like turning a little double hem, but it's a very petite one. And we're going to do that all the way along. Just getting it ready to sew. And then once we've pressed that on both ends of the wrap skirt, we're going to pop it underneath the machine and we're going to stitch all the way along, quite close to the folded edge. So the inside fold is going to get a lovely line of straight stitch. To hold that in place. So I'm 
going to iron all the way along the hem, just turning it up by a small amount and then I tuck in the top of that turn and I iron again all the way along. By setting that first fold and then tucking the top in, you can make sure you keep that lovely curve of the hem and you don't run into too much trouble um, with wrinkles or straight edges where you'd rather it be a curve. Just the same as we did for the hem on the outer edges. So stitching quite close to the fold, going through all three layers, making sure we're holding that hem nicely in place and stitch all the way round once more making sure that you have that hem turned up nicely and you've got a nice even hem all the way around your skirt. So with our hem in place and with our turned edges on either side of our overlap, what we now want to do is turn our attention to the waistband. The waistband of our skirt has been cut, so when it's all folded in and on the top of the skirt, it's gonna be just two and a half centimeters wide. In order to get that, what we want to do is turn one edge of our waistband down by 1.5. We're gonna give that a little press and then we're going to turn the waistband down once more by the 2.5 that we want the waistband to be deep. So we'll have a folded edge on one side and we will have one edge, which is the one we're going to stitch around the top of our skirt, left unfolded just for now. Once we've ironed all the way round our waistband, what we want to do is pin it to the top of our skirt. So we find the top edge of the skirt, we take the waistband and we pin that unfolded edge to the top of the skirt, popping in some pins as we go. Once those pins are in place, we want to stitch that waistband into place. There should be a little overlap um, just at either end of the skirt. So that's why we've added those four centimetres um, to make sure that we've got just a little overlap at the top of the skirt. If there isn't a little overlap, if you haven't quite stuck to the seam allowances, if it ends up a little bit short or a little bit too long, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can just make one of your little side seams just ever so slightly deeper to make sure that it still fits nicely. Or you can just fold the end of your skirt in that little bit further um, to make sure that waistband fits. Everything's, you know, tweakable because um, you've got quite a large overlap on the front of this skirt anyway. So once our waistband's in place, the final thing to do uh, is to add our little button loop. And they have been created by bringing a piece of fabric that's four centimeters wide by, mm, you want it to be at least kind of 20 centimeters long um, and then you can cut it into two 10 centimeter lengths you might want to make them ever so slightly smaller it entirely depends on the size of the button you're using um, but if you've got about 10 centimeters of each it'll mean you've got plenty and you can make them smaller if you want to you want to take those small button loop turn it in so that the raw edges come towards the center and then we're going to press it in once more so that the whole thing is folded in half. There's no raw edges on display. What we'll then do is we'll run a line of stitching down the side of that little strip of fabric that'll hold it all into place. You want to fold that little strip of fabric in half so the ends of the button loop are brought together. You then want to fold the waistband of your skirt backwards down towards the seam round the waistband that you've just sewn. And in between those two layers, you're going to pop your little button loop to be held securely there. So I'm going to pop the little button loop. I'm going to bring that other layer down on top of it. And then I'm going to get a nice little pin 
into place and it goes underneath the sewing machine and you stitch through all those layers to hold it nicely into place. So I'm just going to run that through now. And you want to be stitching right towards the end so that when you turn it back, you're not going to catch your folded fabric, you're going to stitch straight across towards the very end, holding the belt loop or the button loop in place as you go. Give it a little trim if it needs it, and then you can turn it through and your little button loop will be safely secured inside. They're ready to go round the button and you can then fold the rest of your waistband down over the raw edges that are inside that little waistband and you're going to want to pop some pins in all the way along and then that gets sewn as well just to hold the whole of the waistband into place. So pins go in it's best to stitch it looking at the top side of the fabric so you can keep it in a lovely neat straight line with the waistband on the outside. You can pop your pins into the back like I am doing as long as you remember to just pop your hand underneath and take them out again as you stitch towards them. So you can either pin from the top or you can pin from the underneath. Once it's pinned all the way along you're then going to pop it underneath the sewing machine and you will be sewing round the whole of that waistband just to make sure that waistband is nice and secure. Okay, so our waistband is in place. The very next thing we need to do, it, once that's all nicely in position, is to work out exactly where our little buttons should be on our wrap skirt. Now the best way to do that is to pop the skirt on, making sure that the centre back is at the centre of your back, and then simply wrap the skirt over either side. And what you're looking for is where the button loops meet the side of your skirt. So you want to pop a little pin in where one side is, and then pop a little pin in where the other side is. Once those pins are in, you can take the skirt off again and where those pins are, you're going to want to pop a little button. So grab whatever buttons you might have, have a little clip out, see if there's one that matches nicely. Have a little sit down, get yourself a needle and thread, nice and ready for stitching and then simply bring your button to the pin, stitch it into place and you will have your skirt almost ready to wear. Once both those buttons are in place you can pop your little skirt on and you are ready to go. So here she is all finished, a little wrap skirt in a lovely summery fabric, perfect for the current weather. Hoping you have fun with this little project and I'll see you all again very soon. Well done, keep stitching!